Ah, man, where do I start with this one? I've seen the paper, well, not the actual paper, but I've seen the questions that came and damn, I thought P1 was crazy, but this, this is something else. You know the drill, I've gathered the questions that came and we'll go through them question by question and I'll give you my thoughts on each question. Then after that, we'll talk about threshold. I've gone through the A-level subreddit and let's just say no one was impressed with that paper. And rightly so, what I saw in that paper was despicable. But anyways, let's look at the first question. And again, thank you to my trusty sources who will remain unnamed. Number one, it's a binomial expansion. It would have been straightforward if you didn't have to factor out first. If that's not the end of the case, that's about um, fold in this paper, I don't know what is. Binomial expansion itself isn't an awful concept. I mean, you're just using the formula for binomial expansion and just simply substituting into it. Except if the expression you've been given is not already of the form 1 plus x to the n, then you have to factor out to get that one. And that's the trickiest part. And Cambridge starts you off right there, straight in the deep end. And already you get that feeling that this paper, this paper is going to be a good one. You know the one topic that only has one type of question? The one trick pony for pure three, that's numerical solution. It usually comes with a three part question that has a total of about six marks. And in my opinion, it's more on the easier side. Want to guess how many marks it came with in this paper? Three marks only three marks. In fact, when we look at the records in the past two years, it's never been below five marks. Never. But in this paper, some guy at Cambridge thought it would be a good idea to stage the students some good numerical solutions marks. And especially if you'd never seen a question like part B, you probably didn't even know where to start because the wording of the question itself is just so ambiguous. Now, the next question makes me very angry. For context, I did my A-levels in 2021 and 2022, then in 2023 and 2024, I've been tutoring slash teaching A-level maths. Yes, I'm old. I know, let's not talk about that. The point is, the point is that I've been doing A-level maths for the past four years now. So I've done hundreds of papers. And in my hundreds of papers, I've only ever come across three square root of a complex number questions. It's so rare to the extent that I know the years of those questions. One is from 2019, one is from 2021, and the most recent one is from May, June 2024. I mean, you can see that it's pretty rare. It's coming at a rate of like once every two years. In fact, in my prediction for this October, November pure 3 paper, I predict that the next time we see it would be in 2026 but Cambridge literally made me eat my own words they threw it in the next exam series the problem is not that this is a rare question couldn't care less it's that it's not very easy to solve if you've never seen this question before it's very difficult to come up with a solution because it's not very intuitive so I can imagine the scenes in that exam hall when people were seeing this question I mean fair play to Cambridge I actually believed that we weren't going to see this one in a while but boy was that wrong. Number four is very reasonable. In fact, it was expected. It's the standard for logarithms and exponentials. We get one equation with either three or four marks. So very textbook question. Ah, uh, yes, of course, we get some polar form as well. I really thought pure one was crazy, but this, <laughs> this is just ridiculous to the extent where it's actually funny. I admit I've actually felt that Cambridge have always had a lot of room to explore in the complex numbers topic, and they've never really done that before. And I think now we're actually starting starting to see that more so in these recent papers now i'm just going to start sounding like a broken record we've got another question that's rare it's a linear low question but i guess we should have seen the warning signs because it did appear in all three of the june papers i thought they were false alarms but turns out cambridge actually wanted the smoke before this year this concept was pretty much unheard of only appearing once in 2023 and now the tables have turned number seven is the only question that i could say looks somewhat normal but even then then you end up having to solve a hidden quadratic in tan squared 2x. There's nothing normal about that. Number eight, we've got parametric equations, which is fair. They were long overdue. Part B is also fair. Only problem is that usually we're dealing with the tangent and now we're dealing with the normal. But given what we've already seen in this paper and what we're yet to see, we'll take that. I'll actually go out on a limb and say that this vectors question is not that bad. It definitely could have been worse. Yes, you've been given a trapezium and you probably don't even know what 
that looks like but besides the shape these are all questions you've seen multiple times if you have spent a decent amount of time doing vectors so i think that one was fair at this point i'm actually starting to think that cambridge watched my p3 guest paper video because at this point it, it just feels like they're mocking me the square root question i said we'd see in 2026 they brought it and now the rates of change de that i said wouldn't come they brought it as well let me just give you guys the numbers just so that you don't think i'm crazy and the whole of 2023 we didn't have a single rates of change de not one at all this year we get two rates of change de's in june so you think that's that for 2024 we'll probably see it next year but no cambridge is not about to be that predictable so they bring a whole 13 marks they nested within a bit of polynomial division as if that makes it any better owns probably last did long division in grade four and now they're being asked to do it with letters under time pressure honestly it's brutal okay now this question i had to read it twice just to make sure it said what i thought it said forget about the rest of the questions those were easy or a generous medium compared to this question i'm not talking about the part a that's standard differentiation it's the part b i'm interested in you had to use a substitution which is already a high order concept by itself then you had to decompose into partial fractions also a high order concept then you had to integrate and who knows what hell you had to deal with after that i'll be honest i've never seen anything quite like this this question is one for the ages and the fascinating thing about this paper is that it shares a lot of similarities with the june papers but at the same time it feels nothing like the june papers somehow cambridge still managed to find a way to come up with some unique questions around the same concepts and it doesn't feel like a normal paper it just feels like cambridge picked all the hard questions and put them all into one paper i still don't understand how there's an a-level paper and how you're supposed to complete that in an hour and 50 minutes so now let's talk about threshold i'll admit my prediction for the pure one threshold was a bit higher than most people expected but hear me out my thought process is that cambridge has been talking about getting back to pre-covid standards for a while now you know that's 60 plus for pure one that is and my thinking is that there's obviously going to be that one paper that has to take the hit for them to be able to make this jump and i kind of feel like it might be this october paper hence my eye prediction but realistically going off of the difficulty low 50s makes sense enough about pure one check out the video if you haven't watched it already but now let's look at the threshold for pure three looking at the previous trends if we focus on the pre-covid years you notice that the lowest thresholds they are around 54 marks and i'm pretty sure that this paper is probably going to be around that mark as well if i had to guess i would say 53 out of 75 will be the minimum mark required to get an a it may be slightly lower or slightly higher but i think 53 should be it and that's my prediction i would love to know what you think let me know in the comments down below if you enjoyed this video leave a like subscribe and see you next time Thank you.